This is WPC G nineteen ninety five. Broadcasting live from computer number one, San Diego, California. Good morning, welcome to WPCG 1995 News. Computer number two couldn't access because of battery charging problems. So we decided to make it for us. Hey, I heard this said was resembling any ways into the news. Say goodbye to high fees banks, folks. As today we say today says, a recent decision by Chase to discontinue fees for small overdrafts may signal big banks are having a change of heart about their fee policies. The decision comes on the heels of a class action lawsuit against multiple banks regarding how those institutions process transactions. In addition, a government agency is continuing its investigation into overdraft fees. Overdraft fees under microscope. The case against bank overdraft fees has been steadily growing during the past several years. In 2009, consumers filed a class action lawsuit in Florida against 38 banks. An issue was how the banks processed transactions at the end of the day. The lawsuit alleged banks reordered transactions and processed the largest debits first in order to maximize overdraft fees. According to news reports, 14 banks agreed to multi-million dollar settlements in the case including the following institutions. Bank of America, $410 million Citizens Bank, $137 million Chase, $110 million BNC, $90 million TED Bank, $62 million US Bank Corp. $55 million in addition to the lawsuit, the Federal Consumer Financial Protection Bureau announced in February that it was launching its own investigation into overdraft practices and policies. Again, one of the core concerns was the reordering of transactions to process the largest debits first instead of applying them in chronological order. Banks respond by adjusting policies. As part of its settlement, Chase agreed not to charge overdraft fees for small transactions of less than $5 beginning on July 22, 2012. The bank will also not process most transactions in chronological order. While Chase is the largest bank to waive some overdraft fees, it is not the first. SunTrust also waives fees when the overdraft is less than $5. Other banks are taking a different approach to their overdraft fees. Huntington, a regional bank operating in six Midwest states, rolled out what it calls asterisk free checking. Under its checking policy, customers who overdraft their account can waive any fees by making a deposit the next day to bring their balance positive. As government regulations have limited bank profits from merchants' light fees, overdraft fees appear to have become more important to financial institutions' bottom lines. According to independent financial research firm Mobe Services, American consumers paid an estimated $29.5 billion in overdraft fees in 2011. A recent report from the Pew Charitable Trusts found the median bank fee is $35. While banks may be profiting from overdraft fees, the recent legal and government action indicates there may be limits to how deep financial institutions can get into their customers' pockets. A new Chase policy could mark the beginning of the trend, as banks seek to walk the fine line between pleasing customers and regulators, while also satisfying their shareholders. Read more http slash slash community point mazback point com slash news 2012 7 banks respond to pressure on dash overdraft dash fees not asks stoyip equals 154,135 number x 20 kubit. Let's keep going to the news. Blockbuster Express, RIP. Despite a strong brand name and state of art kiosk, Blockbuster Express couldn't overcome significant head start by market leader Redbox. With the June 25th closing of Coinster's $100 million acquisition of NCR Corp.S Entertainment Division, D.B.A, Blockbuster Express 
The curtain has closed. In a kiosk vendor, some thought could push market leader with bots. Express kiosks, which were owned and operated by MC, are under a license agreement with Blockbuster Incorporated, and amassed a national retail footprint of 10,000 kiosks M dash about a quarter the size of red bots. The kiosks M dash adorned in Blockbuster blue and yellow M dash featured a 20 inch high definition screen playing trailers and could be upgraded for digital distribution in micro drives. But less than two years after CEO Bill Moody declared the 2009 rollout of Express Kiosks as a headline event for MC car management enthusiasm for kiosk rentals waned as the losses mounted. The final blow apparently came a year ago when Moody said the company was exploring a gamut of options, including sale of the Express division. Express Kiosks posted a $60 million operating loss in 2011 and dash a stark contrast to Redbox, which was generating exponentially higher market share and operating income. Redbox will substitute its kiosks for Express units in select locations, while shuttering the rest. I think MCR just felt being an entertainment retailer was not their core business and they preferred to sell the property to a true entertainment retailer, Redbox, said Bill Luria, managing director of equity research with Wabush Securities in Los Angeles. Colleague Michael Pastor said many express kiosks were situated in inferior locations compared to Redbox. For example, at a Rolf supermarket in Rancho Santa Margarita, California, a busy red box kiosk is located inside the store by the checkout aisles. By comparison, a Nitro Express kiosk sits off in the corner outside a neighboring CBS pharmacy. They never hit critical mass, Patchter said. Regardless, Luria said the sale of Express units to red box allowed MC Park to salvage its investment in physical entertainment distribution while at the same time enabling them to focus on providing services they do specialize in, such as manufacturing and servicing self-service equipment, including the equipment they sold to Redbox. Indeed, MCR secured an additional five-year service contract with Coinster as part of the sale, which includes a guaranteed payment of $25 million. Regardless, Today's official conclusion of the transaction underscored the sizable gap between Redbox and Express and the reality both companies were going in opposite directions. It was too little, too late, said an analyst who does not cover MCR slash Coinster but is familiar with the kiosk market. Now we go to Microsoft Mike for the weather. Thank you Microsoft Sam, we have low rain in US. There's much rain in Michigan, Colorado, and North Carolina, but anyways local weather says 76 degrees Fahrenheit high, and 65 degrees Fahrenheit low, I guess that's it. Now we go to sports with Bill Gates. Why hello and welcome to sports with Bill Gates. Tomorrow, CSN and SSSD will be broadcasting MLB Baseball tonight. San Diego Padres vs. Chicago Cubs at 7.05 p.m. And also, on Thursday night, ESPN will be broadcasting NFL preseason football. San Diego Chargers vs. Green Bay Packers at 5 p.m. And now we go back on Microsoft Sam. Thank you for watching WPC G1995 News. This is Microsoft Sam, signing off. And that concludes a broadcasting day.